Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. San Antonio fire crews work to put out a fire on the city's north side. Just ahead, the latest on the investigation. Plus, a notable decline in coronavirus hospitalizations around the country. Why health officials say it's not, it's to say to celebrate, not to start celebrating just yet. And a notable decline in the humidity this morning. We still have some out there, but it uh, definitely feels a little bit more comfortable. Still waiting on a return of those crisp fall like temperatures to South Texas. Good morning, everybody. Hope you had an awesome weekend. It is Monday. It is October 4th. I'm so happy to be filling in for Stephanie uh, this Monday morning. I love that it's October. Yesterday, I went up to the attic and got the decorations down, the orange lights. The orange lights. The orange lights, not the Christmas lights, but the orange Halloween lights. I uh, got my artificial pumpkins out. I'm going to make a scarecrow. Got the two skeletons out of the closet. You're ready. All we need is temperatures to match. So no pressure. Mike Gostrage is here. Mike, can we order up some temperatures maybe in the 50s or 60s during the day? We, mm -hmm. Well, during in the morning, we'll be down in the, the lower 60s later on in the week. But I, I yeah. know what I'm t saying is pure fantasy. Well, for I know. Now. Yeah, <laughs> no, no, it's still going to be on the warm side though in the afternoon, but we will have lower humidity. So okay. if you put your Halloween decorations up over the weekend, no, it did not feel like fall. It was very humid doing that on Saturday and this morning, a nice start out there. We do have a couple of leftover clouds. Temperatures at 73. We're going to continue to drop down this morning and I'm going for about mid upper ish uh, 60s when it's all said and done. Got some mid 60s in parts of the hill country and yeah, the humidity is much lower, but but still have some out there, especially around Pleasanton, Stinson, and then a little bit better up there. Comfort 59 for a dew point temperature. And we will, like I said, continue to dry out throughout the rest of the day, as well as uh, the rest of the work and school week. Mold is high. Ragweed moderate. Mold really went up there. Fall elm uh, is on the low side. Mold should be dropping down in the next couple of days. So I'm going for 65. Uh, later on this morning, partly cloudy skies and then a high temperature. Plenty of sunshine out there, 88 degrees northeasterly wind. And so that's going to continue to pull in the drier air. So the humidity will be dropping down later on today. And yes, that will lead to nice, pleasant mornings. But the afternoons are going to be, oh gosh, anywhere about four, almost five degrees above normal. But low humidity. Will that last into the weekend? Details coming up in just a couple of minutes. Mark. Thank you, Mike. New this morning, arson investigators are working to figure out what caused a Northside pool house to catch fire. All started around 1030 last night. The Panther Creek at Stone Oak subdivision. Crews on scene tell us when they arrived to the pool house or clubhouse, the roof was on fire. Not long afterwards, the patio covering collapsed. No injuries were reported. Damages are estimated to be worth about $90,000. While many have started moving on to booster shots, Metro Health wants people to know it is still offering first and second COVID-19 vaccines. A pop-up clinic at TriPoint YMCA off of St. Mary Street administered both Pfizer and Johnson & Johnson vaccines yesterday. The clinic also serves as a way to teach future health care professionals. We spoke to one nursing student who hopes sharing her experience with the vaccine will encourage others to get the shot. To be honest, like many other people, I had a little bit of hesitation in the beginning, um, but after learning more about the vaccination and doing my own research, I decided to get it in February. And since then, I've been fine. I didn't have any symptoms personally, except a sore arm. The next pop-up clinic is happening today at Antioch Sports Complex off Eros e e e Street. The Pfizer vaccine will be given out from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Well, now to some good news on a Monday morning, a notable decline in coronavirus related hospitalizations for the first time in three months. However, health officials warn we are not out of the woods just yet. This as vaccine mandates are set to go into effect around the country. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. With the U.S. death toll from COVID now more than 700,000 vaccine mandates going into effect today that will cost some people their jobs if they don't have at least one shot. I felt shocked, surprised, heartbroken. My students messaged me Friday. I am not allowed to talk to them, even though I gave them a heads up that this is it. In New York City, the nation's largest school district, more than 93% of teachers have had at least one shot, well above the national average. I cannot imagine giving up my 24-year career because I didn't get a vaccine. The more people get vaccinated, hopefully the more lives we could save. And so I was all for the vaccine mandate. 
In Connecticut, the National Guard is standing by to fill any critical shortages as a mandate for state employees takes effect tonight. There will be some people who say, hell no, and um, I'm sorry, but um, that means you're not safe. You're not safe to the people around you. And in California, the governor taking a first in the nation step, mandating the shot for all public school students. Dr. Anthony Fauci reminding people vaccine mandates are nothing new. We have made it a requirement for children to get into schools to get different types of vaccines. So when people treat this as something novel and terrible, it isn't. While COVID-related hospitalizations are down, Dr. Fauci also warning people not to let their guard down, even when it comes to making those holiday plans with family. It's just too soon to tell. We've just got to concentrate on continuing to get those numbers down and not try yeah. to jump ahead by weeks or months and say what we're going to do. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. In your morning headlines, the Supreme Court convenes today to begin a new term. It will be the first time in more than a year that justices meet in person in their chamber. All of them, except Justice Brett Kavanaugh, who just tested positive for COVID, are expected to be on the bench. In the coming months, the nine justices are expected to tackle issues like abortion, the Second Amendment, religious liberty, and possibly affirmative action. Well, new data from the Department of Defense says suicide rates among active duty service members has gone up to more than 40% in five years. The data says in 2020, there was a 9.1% increase in the rate for active duty service members. Among reserve members, it went up to 19.2% last year, but it has gone down since 2018. And though the rate for the National Guard members went up to almost 32%, it has also decreased in the past two years. In 2020 alone, 580 members of the military died by suicide. North Korea has reopened communications with South Korea after cutting ties earlier this year. South Korea's Unification Ministry confirms the North responded on a hotline this morning. A communications link between the two countries' militaries has now been restored. North Korean leader Kim Jong-un vowed to restore hotlines with the South during a speech last week. 437, about 72 degrees. Well, the Houston Texans, they took a big hit over the weekend against the Bills. And the Cowboys get another win in Arlington. We'll have a recap of details of their huge win over the undefeated Carolina Panthers. That's coming up after the break. 72 degrees at 437 this morning. Mike says it will it'll be coolish this week. He'll explain when we come back. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. Now to morning sports week four, the NFL in the books for the Cowboys and Texans. It was Dallas who would come away with a big win yesterday against a very good Carolina Panthers team. Final Dallas wins 36-28. Cowboys will host their NFC East rival New York Giants in a late afternoon matchup coming up this coming Sunday. Things not so great for the Houston Texans. The team returning home following a 40 to nothing blowout loss to the Buffalo Bills. Houston now preparing for the Patriots who lost in a nail biter last night to the Bucks. Uh, Patriots coming to town next week. I watched the football game. Which I mean, one? the Cowboys. When mm -hmm. I say the football game. Yeah. God, that was a great game. Impressive. Um, I was like, are, is it, are they going to pull it off? Them? They did. They're firing on all cylinders right now. They're looking very much like uh, the top dogs in the NFC East. It's exciting. It is. Right now, it's 441, about 72 degrees. Well, a perfectionist since he was in diapers, still ahead on GMSA, we're introducing you to one of the kids who turned a simple hobby into a career goal. Plus, the all-out manhunt for Gabby Petito's boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. Details on where one man says he may have seen him. A hiker in North Carolina says he had an encounter with Brian Laundrie along the Appalachian Trail. ABC's Victor Okendo has the details in today's GMA First Look. In this morning's GMA First Look, the all-out manhunt for Gabby Petito's boyfriend, Brian Laundrie. The desperate search intensifying. It's been nearly three weeks since Brian was last seen. Police in North Carolina monitoring dozens of reports of possible sightings, but none of the claims have checked out. But on Saturday morning, Dennis Davis says he was near the Tennessee-North Carolina border on the Appalachian Trail when he says he pulled up beside someone who looked like laundry. Yeah, the guy was acting very weird. Immediately, I could tell there was something wrong with the guy. And I asked myself, I mean, could that be Brian Laundry? I 
pulled up on my phone and, and looked at a picture of him. And I was like, man, that was him. Davis says he called the FBI twice and reported the encounter to local authorities. And we'll have the very latest on this urgent manhunt coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. Right now it's 445. He's a young kid with a creative mind and a gift for art. 14-year-old Cypress Rapke takes us into his world of imagination and illustration. And today's What's Up South Texas, Jaffney Gray tells us what started off as a simple hobby turned into a career goal. During that, I think of like an idea and then I draw it out, but it, the drawing takes a lot longer. This is 14 year old Cypress Rabke, and this is his intricate artwork. And he just needs a pen and a piece of paper and he can kind of create magic. From tiny robotic insect drawings of a thorn beetle to large scale reptiles. I think this is my favorite out of all of them. Cypress is smooth with a pen, but believe it or not, he used to hate art because he was such a perfectionist when he was just in diapers. All of a sudden he draws this um, Labrador for our friend Martha and it was crazy for like a two and a half year old or however old you were, it was pretty good. Since then, art has become his favorite hobby that he hopes to turn into a career one day. His attention to detail is superior. It was always these super inventive, um, drawings of things that I could never imagine in real life with all of these little tiny, very realistic details in them. With a love for nature as well, Cypress has another goal in mind. I am interested in learning how to farm. Being a straight A student, Cypress's teachers are finally used to his constant doodling. He's always, always got his, his pen moving, but his teachers at school now really see that that's him just thinking. Thoughts that have been seen by many on social media and even in his own little art show he put on where a portion of the proceeds went to environmental causes. So far, he's drawn hundreds and hundreds of different pieces and he hopes his drive to always be better inspires others to be creative. You don't have to be like a professional to start drawing. You can just draw whenever and whatever. For What's Up South Texas, I'm Jaffney Gray. Boy, talk about mm. detail. It was beautiful. Two words, Mike Osterhage, art scholarship. Yes, <laughs> mm -hmm. gonna definitely. Going to do some cool things. Mm -hmm. is it, speaking of cool, is it going to be cooler? It will week? be uh, later on this week in the mornings. We're or at least cool-ish. Yeah, it will be down uh, about normal or a little bit below that, around 60-ish, uh, give or take. You know, obviously 50s in the hill country. This morning, though, it's going to be kind of an effort to have temperatures drop down. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here, and there is a hint of some fog around LaGrange, Victoria, and Beeville. We still have a lot of leftover humidity off to the east, especially. It, the air is trying to dry out. Of course, we had that. You could feel it in the afternoon yesterday when it became a bit more pleasant and it's going to become more pleasant as the uh, the day progresses. Dew point temperatures are down well here in town about five degrees compared to this time yesterday. Um, not a, a big, big drop as of right now, but we will see a more significant drop throughout the rest of the afternoon. These numbers are going to drop down and then they're going to be staying down. So with that drier air it does not hold the heat in like moist air does. So with clear skies, also light wind, we've got perfect cooling situation and so that's why temperatures are going to be dropping down lower the next few mornings. So the rest of the week looks pretty good, although in the afternoon it is going to be on the warm side. Now granted it is going to be dry out there. Humidity is going to be low, so it will be comfortable, but temperatures are going to be uh, not cool, crisp, fallish by any means. So still got some moisture aloft in the atmosphere, and so I think we'll still have uh, some clouds hanging around here this morning, maybe some veiled sunshine throughout a good chunk of the day, but those clouds will continue to uh, clear on out. And you can see them on the uh, satellite picture right now, and even a few leftover sprinkles well off to the uh, west along the Rio Grande Valley. And then uh, back upstream. Boy, there is just nothing going on out there. That's what's in store for the rest of the week. Just nice sunshine pretty much uh, all week long. High pressure is going to start to build in here. And now we do have a, a low which is coming on in from the north and east of us. And so that's going to put us into kind of a northerly airflow that's going to keep things kind of dry around here. As far as no rain chances, uh, humidity is going to stay low. And this is going to be the case all the way through the rest of the week with that high sort of dominating. Then it moves on in here and that's going to help to 
kind of warm us up a little bit more going into the weekend and we'll start to see more humidity return as we go into the weekend. There is a bit of a front that's going to try and slide through by Sunday. This little wave up here that may squeeze out Sunday early Monday may squeeze out a shower too kind of a wait and see type situation, but that also then looks like that high is going to try and build uh, or move down and a big trough building here to the west. And that could mean by next week another more potent kind of a front. But hey, just enjoy this week. Nice mornings, pleasant afternoons, 83 degrees, partly cloudy skies at noon. And yes, we will be a little bit on the uh, above normal side. Normal right around 86 right now. And oh, uh, jump past that. No football today. Sorry, forgot to take that on my show from Friday. Well, it's a good day for football. Well, there's Monday night football, right? There's my excuse. Just, <laughs> just save myself from embarrassment. 88 the next uh, couple of days, 80, uh, low 90s all the way through the week. Low temperatures will be pleasant, upper 50s, 60s. So we've got some low 50s in parts of the hill country, but more humid this weekend. Mm. So if you do have to put up Halloween decorations today, sure. tomorrow, the next couple yeah. of days. Yeah. Okay. During the week. Can you make that happen? Oh, I'm halfway done. Okay. So yes. Keep us posted. I will. Cool. I'll Thank post you, Mike. pictures. Thank you very much. 451, about 72 degrees. Well, a huge opening weekend for the new Venom movie, and No Time to Die continues to take hits from the pandemic. That's next in today's morning's showbiz. Here are your lottery numbers, and I know nobody won that big no Powerball. Yeah, it's I won be... $8 from it. Though. Did you really? Big deal. Fantastic. Um, can you? I'll, I'll get my own <laughs> ticket. Never mind. Uh, pick three number 758, Fireball 2. Daily 4 number 0146, Fireball 3. Cash 5, 15, 16, 21, 24, 30. Texas Lotto, 1, 9, 14, 23, 29, 41. Here are those Powerball numbers 28, 38, 42, 47, 52. Powerball 1, Power Play 2. I believe it's up to 670 million. It was a roller coaster at the box office this weekend when it comes to revenue. For the latest on what's happening in Hollywood, here's ABC's Christopher Watson. All I ever wanted in this world is carnage. A huge opening weekend for Venom, Let There Be Carnage. The cinema-only superhero action comedy sequel scored $90.1 million domestically. I am a predator. That's nearly 30 million more than expected and tops previous pandemic record holder Black Widow by 10 million bucks. Growing up with the family takes a toll. The news not so good for the much hyped Sopranos prequel The Many Saints of Newark. It scored a meager $5 million fourth place bow. James Bond. License to kill. Multiple pandemic delays seem only to have whetted the appetite for no time to die. Daniel Craig's farewell appearance as 007 earned a pandemic record $119.1 million overseas this weekend. By the way, Craig will receive a star on the Hollywood Walk of Fame Wednesday, ahead of Friday's U.S. premiere. And Supergirl star Melissa Benoist is 33 Monday. And that's what's happening in Hollywood. I'm Christopher Watson, ABC News. 455, about 72 degrees. Well, still ahead in our next half hour, the latest involving Facebook after the ex-manager alleges a social media giant contributed to the, de to the deadly U.S. Capitol riot. Plus, fighting to preserve a public housing complex in the heart of the West Side, Myra Arthur has a preview of this week's KSAT Explains episode. Well, millions of Americans have fallen victim to porch pirates ahead on GMSA at 6. We'll tell you some of the best ways to protect your packages from the thieves. If you are about to head out the door, things look great right now at 410 and Jackson Keller. A few more cars on the road just in the last half hour or so. Two hours of traffic coming up with our Stephen Cavazos coming up next. Live from Case at 12, Good Morning San Antonio starts right now. And making headlines this hour, a man is shot for refusing to give thieves his money. Where San Antonio police say it all happened. And a local child advocate is speaking up on how the COVID-19 pandemic is still affecting children who are unsafe situations. We break down the ways to spot signs of abuse and when to go for help. 
and outside with live cam. It's not a bad morning out there. 72 degrees. Hope you had an awesome weekend. We're going to talk to Mike Oshie so we can work out some lower humidity for most of your work week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, October 4th. Thank you so much for being with us this morning. I'm so happy to be back here on GMSA with you guys. I and also I love that we're in October. I don't know. I just feel like everyone's in a better mood. It's hard, it's hard to be in a bad mood when yeah. you're looking down the barrel of, of autumn or and cooler temperatures yeah. eventually. Yeah, and I mean football was great, Mike. And are we gonna have that kind of football weather this week or is it gonna still kind of stay eh? Well, the humidity will continue to drop down throughout the rest of the week. Now, it's not going to be necessarily cold. We will have cooler mornings because of the uh, the drier air is going to allow it to uh, cool down a little bit more. It's still going to be warm in the afternoon, but yes, it will feel more like fall. And I think the reason why people get, you know, because you got, you know, decorations and Halloween, then you got Thanksgiving on the heels of that and Christmas and all the holidays. So let's not jump ahead of ourselves here. It's 71 degrees right now. We have dropped down a few more notches in the past hour. Dew points down to 64, which means Yes, there is still some humidity out there, but it will continue to drop down throughout the rest of the day. And I do think we're going to be dropping into the uh, kind of mid upper 60s and then nice big warm up 88 degrees. Normal average high is 86, so we will be slightly above that and that will be the trend for high temperatures throughout the rest of the week. The aquifer continue to benefit from the rain that we had late last week up a half a foot and the allergens a lot of mold out there that should be dropping down throughout the week. It just to, because we've got some drier air coming on in here. Ragweeds moderate and fall elm is on the low side with some clear skies out there. Uh, still some humidity. Uh, we are having to watch out for some fog, especially off to the east. Visibility has dropped down to zero now at LaGrange. A little bit around uh, Beeville as well as Victoria. So this is going to be one of those. Got to watch the next couple of hours as this fog may try and creep its way a little bit further to the west over the course of the, the rest of the morning commute. Partly cloudy skies. A nice morning. Uh, it's not crisp necessarily when you step outside, but it's not soggy. So kind of kind of right there almost in the middle, leaning toward the the nicer side, mostly sunny, and then the humidity will continue to drop down throughout the rest of the day. And again, that's going to lead to some cool mornings, nice afternoons, although warm afternoons up around upper 80s, 90 or so the rest of the week and then the weekend couldn't last forever, more humid and maybe squeeze out a couple of showers on Sunday. Details on that coming up in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, Monday morning. How about a nice commute all morning? I think right now things are good, Mike. Uh, we're starting this week off with some clear roads, and let's go ahead and take a look right now at Trans Guide. Uh, right now, Loop 410 at McCullough just shows a few folks out there. Traffic pretty light in a lot of these areas. I-10 at Camp Bullis, uh, pretty lonesome out there, but that's some good news, especially if you're going to be heading out the door there in the next few moments. Uh, you know, although the roads are looking really good right now, there were some issues out there a little bit earlier this morning. Taking you to the map, Loop 410 eastbound from McCullough Avenue to Jones Maltzberger, there was a crash that led to a few lane closures out there was checking with our friends at trans guide that crash thankfully has since cleared and it looks like the road should be open out over there. But as we are jumping around here on the map, we want to take your attention also here to I 10 eastbound. There's some construction going on. Uh, as you can see right now, it's in the eastbound and westbound lanes at Graytown of I 10 that is uh, right at Graytown Road. But you can take a look. We are seeing a little bit of a buildup there in those westbound lanes, uh, but it should be wrapping up by 530 this morning. So hopefully that won't be causing any issues out there. Uh, this will be going on from uh, October 3rd up into until October 8th. So make sure that you are planning accordingly. Taking a wider look at the map, it is pretty green and haven't spotted any issues out there as of yet. But keep in mind, it is still very early out there this morning. So make sure that you are traveling safe. And if you plan on traveling to San Antonio, these inbound times show that it is pretty green across the board. Even coming in from 35, we got 25 minutes right now. So perfect time to head out the door, grab that cup of coffee, maybe turn on the tunes. One last look here at 281 South at Loop 410. Things are quiet right now, but start marking your calendars. We have more construction to be on the lookout for it. That's coming up in the next few minutes. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. A man continues to fight for his life this morning after he was shot at a northeast side apartment complex. This unfolding just after 11 last night in the 14,000 block of Judson Road. Police say the 21 year old man was in the parking lot of the Judson Meadow Apartments when he was approached by two men wearing ski masks. The two suspects held the victim at gunpoint and shot him in the stomach when he refused to give the money. The shooting caused the victim to crash his vehicle into two other vehicles in the parking lot. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So far, no arrests have been made. 
This morning, a far west side neighborhood still on edge as Bear County deputies continued their search for two men who rammed a deputy's vehicle. This all happened Saturday morning in the 200 block of Coriander Bend. That's off Petranco Road. We're told deputies were responding to a domestic violence call, and that's when a suspect who rammed the deputy's vehicle rammed a deputy's vehicle rather. Sheriff Javier Salazar says nearby surveillance video showed two men getting out of the vehicle and running towards a wooded area. Neighbors say they hope the suspects are caught soon. One simple mistake and you keep making more, it's going to just, you know, bury you down in that hole. And right away we all sat there and made sure that we, you know, checked on each other. You're going to get caught one way or another. It's better just to sit there and, you know, man up and take whatever happens to you rather than cause any issues. Sheriff Salazar says he believes someone has information about the two suspects. Contact BCSO if you have any information. The number on your screen, 210-335-6000. Well, child abuse cases have continued during the COVID-19 pandemic. That's why a local child advocate is sharing what children and families have experienced after a recent case of alleged child abuse. Police say Christina Vestal was arrested after a young girl was evaluated at the hospital for multiple injuries to her head, face and body. Vessel claims the girl fell off the couch. However, doctors didn't believe her story and notified the police. Yolanda Valenzuela worked for the nonprofit Child Advocate San Antonio, or CASA, for 15 years and was on the Bear County Child Welfare Board. Says it's been difficult for children to share what they are going through during the pandemic. Some of this abuse lingered until they returned recently to school. And now the numbers are escalating because now they're crying out. Valenzuela says they were able to provide the resources to the family thanks to the different organizations working together in San Antonio. She also suggests families reach out to local organizations that can help relieve the stress families might be facing. If you know a child who is being abused, you can report it to the Texas Abuse Hotline and you can remain anonymous. That number on your screen, 1-800-252-5400. In your morning headlines, an offshore oil spill in Southern California forced, forced local officials to close off part of the ocean. The 126,000 gallons of crude oil and waters off Orange County now causing concerns for marine life and beach lifestyles for those who live in the area. Closure could last several weeks or even months. All eight people on board a small private jet died in Italy when the aircraft crashed after takeoff yesterday. The fire brigade said the plane crashed into an uninhibited building in a Milan suburb. The flight was en route to the Italian island of Sardinia. No cause for the accident has been confirmed. An ex-manager of Facebook alleges the company contributed to the deadly January 6th invasion of the U.S. Capitol. The whistleblower, Francis Haugen, also says a 2018 change to Facebook's news feeds contributed to more divisiveness and ill will in a network created to bring people, people uh, closer together. Facebook says her allegations are misleading and insists there's no evidence to support those allegations. 507, about 71 degrees. We'll still ahead on GMSA, Samsung does away with ads from Samsung Pay, Health, and Weather Apps. Plus, the Alazan courts are the focus of this week's KSAT Explains. We will have a preview next. Mike is calling it cool-ish weather this week. He'll explain when we come back. Well, about a year ago, KSAT Explains released an episode dedicated to the fight to preserve a public housing complex in the heart of the city's west side. This week, the Explains team is heading back to the Alisan courts to take a look at where things stand now. Here's Myra Arthur with a preview. A controversial plan causing concerns, but later called off. Yet the future of the Alisan courts is still uncertain. I go back to the streets. It won't bother me none. It just bothered the city. I know because they were saying they were supposed to uh, relocate us, but I knew it wasn't going to happen. There was a plan to upgrade Los Courts, as they're known to many in this West Side community. They were the first public housing units built in San Antonio. So it's got this amazing history, and I knew about it because, again, I grew up in this neighborhood. The cinder block units built in the 1940s. The upgrades since then include a small AC unit installed on windows for the summer and winter months and I air conditioner I think got the heater but it don't warm up like it should have 
and internet access is a challenge. The need is clear, so it was back to the drawing board to create a new plan and a new future for the hundreds of families living here. And I'm hopeful that the tide is shifting. I hear more people saying that we need to invest in public housing. But questions about what this new plan will mean, not only for the courts, but this community remain. A push to demolish and rebuild versus the effort to preserve history. Our commitment is we're not going to displace any residents. A property like the Alasan Apache is like a safety net. There were questions and concerns about funding because that's sometimes what they say is to tear down something and to rebuild is cheaper than to preserve. One year since we first visited the Alasan courts, we're making a return to dive into what exactly has changed in the past 12 months, what hasn't, and how that's affecting the residents who call the courts home. Well, KSAT exp exp explains Los Cort Courts will be available to stream on demand tomorrow. We'll live stream the episode at 7 p.m. on KSAT.com and the KSAT TV app and KSAT's Facebook page. If you can't watch it live, we'll post the full episode so you can watch it on demand later tomorrow evening. Time check this morning, 513, about 71 degrees. Well, still ahead, the new Microsoft Office is coming this week. How much the company says people and small businesses will be able to purchase it for? Apple reportedly on track to release its new MacBook Pro this fall. Details and more coming up in your Tech Bites. Military life can have its challenges, but sometimes veteran life brings more. As America's veterans face challenges, DAV is there. I'm Greg Gadsden, Army veteran. DAV helps veterans and their families get the benefits they've earned. Today, I'm an entrepreneur, photographer, and public speaker, and I never tire of standing tall. With the right support, more veterans can reach victories, great and small. My victory is just being the best that I can be. Support more victories for veterans. Go to DAV.org. With clean, fresh ingredients, Panera's new chicken sausage and pepperoni flatbread is a mouth-watering explosion of yes. Craft, yes. Hardiness, yes. Living life to the flavor fullest, heck yes. Panera, live your yes. Now $1 delivery. Don't settle for products that give you a sort of white smile. Try Crest Whitening Emulsions for 100% whiter teeth. It's highly active peroxide droplets. Swipe on in seconds. Better, faster, 100% whiter teeth. Shop CrestWhiteSmile.com. Microsoft's new flat price version of its Office software will arrive this week. ABC's Andrew Dimmer has details in today's Tech Bytes. In today's Tech Bytes, get ready for the new Microsoft Office. Office 2021 is set to be released tomorrow, the same day as Windows 11 rolls out. The new Office is a one-time purchase designed for users who don't want to move to the cloud. The consumer version goes for $150. Apple is reportedly poised to unveil a totally redesigned MacBook Pro. Bloomberg says the refreshed laptop is expected to come out within a month. It may include new 14 and 16-inch models, bring back more ports, and an SD card slot. It's expected to drop the touch bar. Finally, if you use some of Samsung's stock apps like Pay and Weather, maybe you've noticed no more ads. The move was expected in August. Samsung had promised to remove the ads later this year, so their absence now seems like the company is making good on their promise. Those are your Tech bites. Have a great day. It's now 5:18. Let's check in with the roads with Stephen Cavazos. Hey, thank you, Mark. Sarah, we are taking a look right now at Trans Guide. So far, things have been pretty quiet. Loop 410 at Broadway. Just a few more folks out there this morning. Uh, typically, Tennessee traffic picking up a little bit closer to six, but right now things have been quiet so far. Up to the minute, Hildebrand. A pretty nice start to the morning and the week as we're getting things going. But make sure you're checking those vehicles because as we take you to the map, we do have a stalled vehicle out there off westbound of 1604 right at Nacogdoches Road. It's not causing any issues. It's still very early on. You can see we have a lot of green on the screen, but make again, make sure that your cars are working properly. You don't want to be stranded on the highways, especially this early in the morning. But let's take a big jump over here to the west side, uh, west side of town because we do have some bridge work that's going to be happening there at Alamo Ranch Parkway and those westbound lanes from loop 1604 to Lone Star Parkway. That's going to be going on overnight from 9 in the evening up until 5 in the morning, but it should be wrapping up by tomorrow. That is October 4th, uh, but the big one that's going to be probably giving drivers some headaches 
uh, for the next two weeks is right there off uh, Loop 1604 to Kyle Seal Parkway. There's some utility work that's going on from the eastbound lanes of Hosman Road. Again, right there from 1604 to Kyle Seal. Uh, it should be going on started tonight or overnight, that is, but uh, should be wrapping up by October 18th. That is a two week project. Uh, traffic in the meantime will be to tour to Kyle Seal Parkway uh, to access the West Hausman Road. So taking a wider look, though, things have been pretty quiet again. We're not spotting any big issues, but one last look at trans guy traffic still pretty light out there. But as always, make sure you have both eyes and hands on the wheel, guys. Stephen, that closure out there on 1604. I was telling somebody about it this weekend. They said, how many nights is that again? I was like, no, no, two weeks, two weeks, Ooh. two weeks. <laughs> Got to reemphasize that part. Be yeah. patient. Pack your patience. Yes, sir. Yeah. Thank you, Stephen. Mike, that's a pretty picture behind you. Gorgeous picture. This is from uh, yesterday morning. Beautiful, beautiful sunrise. Had a couple of clouds out there, and that's going to be the case this morning. We got just a few high clouds hanging around here. Otherwise, um, it's it's still kind of humid. You can't get around, uh, around that. It has dropped down from where it was over the weekend. Saturday was very, very humid. And starting off yesterday, we were on the humid side, and then the front moved on through here. We also, with some of this humidity, have some fog. There's a hint of it there at Porta Say. Not bad in the metropolitan area. Go off to the east, and there's a bunch of it. Very thick, actually. LaGrange came up to a quarter mile. It's down to uh, just zero visibility. Eight miles, Victoria. So, going to be flirting with a little bit of this throughout the morning hours. Just watch it. You may, you know, turn a corner and run into some fog, especially off to the east. Yesterday we did hit 90, so four degrees above normal. Pleasanton was 94, 97 in Catula, not very fallish. Today we'll be in the same ballpark, maybe down a couple of notches here and there with temperatures in the uh, mid to upper 80s around the area. But take note, heat index readings are forecast to be maybe a degree or two at or a degree or two below what the air temperature is. That's because we've got the drier air, which will continue to move on in here. And so when the air is that dry, then your body cools itself very, very efficiently. Kind of like if you were in a in the water and then hopped out, the water would evaporate so quickly after your body, it would actually make it feel kind of cool out there. So that's going to be the, the case throughout the afternoon hours. Dew point temperatures, why this line dropped down there, I don't know why, but they are going to remain uh, fairly pleasant throughout the rest of the week. So it's that's going to allow temperatures to drop down with the most the clear skies. We do have some clouds hanging around here right now, but we're going to be getting rid of those. And so we'll have plenty of sunshine and clear skies overnight throughout the rest of the week. Dry air, clear skies, light wind, perfect for cooling temperatures. But then the afternoons are definitely going to be on the warm side. So we've got these clouds hanging around here right now. Again, nothing really upstream. Big, big low off there around the Great Lakes. That's what pulled the front on through here and uh, it's not necessarily a cold front, but just at least some drier air, so it will be more comfortable. And don't really have anything even down the road that looks like any big, good fall cold fronts, unfortunately. 83 degrees today, partly cloudy skies at noon. High temperature then up to 88, so we will be a few degrees above normal. And that's going to be the case for the high end of things. Low end of things will actually be a little bit on the, the cool side, so we're going to be gaining roughly 30 degrees throughout the day. Good indication with some very dry air in place. Those cool mornings, warm afternoons, so maybe a sweatshirt for the kids in the hill country. Put your name in it, so get stuffed in the backpack or if it doesn't get stuffed in the backpack in the afternoon and uh, more humidity this weekend. A couple of showers are possible, maybe Sunday. In the 15 plus years I've worked with Mike, he has continued to deliver that message about putting your name putting, on. Yeah, helping to cut down. And we, we did some checking, Mike, and, and Lost and Found has dropped 20% <laughs> in the last 15 years. What would we years. do without well, you, what, Mike? Yeah, yeah. Well, how many times it's like, Where's is it? Oh, yeah. Oh, oh yeah. I forget. Well, I mean, heck, I think no. about it when my kid was in school. It's like I mean, you lost your yeah. sweater again. I'm not even a kid yeah. and I need to do that for myself. So yeah. thank you, Mike. <clears throat> Mm -hmm. Thank you, thank you, sir. Right now, 523, about 71 degrees. Well, a free guy actress takes to the stage and Sopranos prequel star goes on a binge. That and more are next in your morning spotlight. David Lee Roth says goodbye to music and Jodie Comer heads to the theater. Here's Rick Damagella with today's Hollywood Minute. David Lee Roth is calling it quits. The legendary Van Halen rocker told the Las Vegas Review Journal that he plans to retire from music after a series of Sin City shows in January. The news comes nearly a year after the band's guitarist, Eddie Van Halen, died of cancer. When my brother's away, everything goes through me. You got diarrhea. 
Corey Stahl stars in the new Sopranos prequel, The Many Saints of Newark, and the actor reveals he loved having a reason to devour the beloved drama series. Occasionally you get a role where, you know, like research is really just like an excuse to just like watch what you wanted to watch anyway and like read what you wanted to read anyway. Um, <clears throat> so, you know, I got to, you know, just binge watch all of The Sopranos again. And yeah. Jodie Comer takes to the stage. The Free Guy actress will be making her live theater debut on London's West End in the one-woman play Prima Facie. Comer stars as a brilliant barrister in the production, which begins a nine-week run in April. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. 527, 71 degrees. Still ahead in our next half hour, the Neighbors app released its fall treat map feature. Plus hundreds of people banned from flying with United Airlines. Details on exactly how many next. And it's no secret that San Antonio is known for its great food. And ahead on GMSA at 6, we'll introduce you to a local TikToker who's highlighting the city's cuisine. It was definitely not in his plans. A man suffered a gunshot wound after heading out to a late night meetup. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. I'll have that story. 71 degrees at 5.30 this morning. Mike has his forecast and he says things are be coolish this week. Good morning, everybody. It's Monday, October 4th. Thank you so much for joining us. Did you have a good weekend, Mark? I did, you? Yeah, I mean, I, I was working, yeah. but I like I was saying earlier, I put out the Halloween decorations. I'm getting in the Halloween spirit. Gonna will it to happen. You do, right, Mike? <laughs> Yes, except it was way too humid to put out Halloween decorations this weekend. Yeah, uh, it was per very humid on Saturday. Yesterday, you could feel how we started off very humid and then it started to drop down in the afternoon as the front moved on through here. So yes, it will feel more as you were talking about coolish in the mornings this week, but then warmish in the afternoons. More on that in a moment. 71 right now, so we are still on the above normal side, but we have dropped down in the past hour and 64 for a dew point, which means yes, there's humidity. It's not like it slaps you in the face when you walk outside, but you can kind of kind of smell it out there a little bit. This we do have mostly clear skies though and temperatures will continue to drop down. So going for a kind of mid upper 60s when it's all said and done this morning. We've got a couple of hints of fog out there. Nothing around the metropolitan area except for that little hint around Port SA, but a lot over toward the Grange and you just want to watch it maybe around Pleasanton, Gonzales as the morning rolls on because there is higher humidity off to the east and so we may see some of that fog trying to form up. Mold is very, very high yesterday's count, but that should start to come down in the next couple of days with dry area moving on in here. Moderate ragweed fall elms on the low side and we'll make it up to 83 at noon, 88 high temperature, little bit on the warmish side. And again, that's going to be the trend throughout the rest of the week. Cool mornings, nice afternoons, low humidity. Will it last into the weekend? Details coming up. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos. So far, so good. Yeah, happy Monday, Mike. Uh, if you're at home, no need to rush out the door right now. Everything at Trans Guide shows some pretty good start shots out there. You can see the road is pretty quiet in some spots. Traffic's light there off Loop 410 at McCullough. Uh, we're only seeing a few drivers out there this morning, but keep in mind overnight there were a few issues out there that were obviously causing some closures. We told you about a crash a little bit earlier this morning. Thankfully, that has since cleared out, but we are unfortunately starting to spot these stalls. Uh, this one's still out there off Loop 1604 West bound in Nacogdoches, not causing any issues. Again, we like to always remind you, uh, make sure you're checking your vehicles before you hit the roadways or the highways because you don't want to be stranded there along 1604 or any of the other highways out there, especially when it is still dark outside. But as I mentioned, that is not the only one we've seen so far. A new one popped up there off 281 northbound right at Bassey Road. Thankfully, though, it is still pretty green around the Alamo City and some of our neighboring communities. We are seeing some a little bit of a buildup of traffic there in those westbound lanes of I-10, but keep in mind, there's still some construction. Hopefully they should be wrapping up soon, but right now nothing's going to be impacting your drive time, especially if you're coming in from Seguin. It's still pretty green. 33 minutes to the downtown San Antonio area and the same goes for everything across the board. We're not spotting any delays there if you plan on heading out the door in the next few moments. Well, let's take one last look at Transguide 1604 Petrenko, US 90 at 36. Things have been pretty quiet so far, so plenty of time to grab that cup of coffee and if you need to head to the gas station, well, we have those gas prices coming up in the next few minutes. Mark, Sarah. Thank you, Stephen.
Well, plans for a late night meetup have gone horribly wrong for one man. He was shot and critically wounded. It happened at an apartment complex on Judson Road, not far from Nacogdoches. Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters where detectives are investigating this case. Katrina, you say this appears to have happened during a robbery. Now, it seems that's what the passenger in the man in the car of the man who was shot told San Antonio police that the shooters demanded money. The police say the man who was shot and his passenger had just pulled into the Judson Meadow apartments when this happened. They say they were there around 11 last night to meet up with someone. Instead, two men in ski masks walked up, pointed guns and demanded money. Police say the victim tried to put his car in reverse and escape, but he was shot. He was rushed to a hospital with a gunshot wound in his upper body. The last word we had from police is that man who was in his 20s was in critical condition. But the two men in the ski mask were gone by the time police arrived, and so far they have not found them. Reporting live at Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Now to some stories we're following on KSAT.com. A man hiking along the Appalachian Trail in North Carolina claims to have spoken to fugitive Brian Laundrie Saturday morning. According to the New York Post, 15-year-old Dennis Davis says a man waved him down along a hiking trail. He said a man pulled up to his car and asked for directions to California using only back roads. Davis said when he told the man to take the interstate, the man refused and said he only wanted to take the back roads. Well, meanwhile, a former student at a Houston public charter school is charged after confessing to shooting and wounding the campus principal last week. Houston police say 25 year old Dexter Kelsey confessed to shooting and is charged with aggravated assault against a public servant and deadly conduct. Police say the principal was treated at the hospital and later released. No students were hurt. Kelsey's bond was set at $5.25 million. Kelsey told authorities he planned to target a female staffer at the school. An oil spill off the coast of California. The Facebook whistleblower revealed and holiday guidance from the CDC. CNN's Britt Conway breaks down this weekend's headlines. Breaking this weekend, a massive oil spill, about 126,000 gallons leaked from a pipeline into the water off the coast of Huntington Beach, California. Our wetlands are being degraded and portions of our coastline are now covered in oil. Officials are still trying to figure out what caused the spill. The Facebook whistleblower has been revealed. 37-year-old Francis Haugen, a former Facebook product manager, came forward in an interview with 60 Minutes. She released tens of thousands of pages of internal research and documents she says show the company prioritized profit over public good. Facebook's own research says it is not just that Instagram is dangerous for teenagers, that it harms teenagers is that it is distinctly worse than other forms of social media. Facebook is pushing back, calling the claims misleading and citing the work that's done to keep people safe on the company's apps. The CDC released new COVID-19 guidelines for the holidays. The top line, get vaccinated, especially if you want to travel and wear masks in indoor public places if you're not vaccinated or if you're in an area of substantial or high transmission. But as Delta continues to spread, the CDC says the safest way to celebrate is virtually with people who live with you or outside and at least six feet apart from others. Another year, another holiday season with COVID. I'm Britt Conway reporting. Federal employees will soon either have to roll up their sleeves to get a COVID shot or roll up their sleeves and start looking for a new place to work. U.S. Office of Personnel Management says agency and department officials can enforce the White House's vaccine mandates next month. Disciplinary actions for unvaccinated federal workers to begin November 9th. Agencies are advised to take first steps like counseling and providing education material. However, if employees keep resisting a, to get a shot without a legitimate legal exception, they can be terminated. United Airlines says it's banned more than 700 passengers for their behavior during the pandemic. United CEO Scott Kirby says the number of unruly passengers is low compared to the number of customers overall. Right now, the airline services close to 3 million customers a week. It also it is also low in comparison with other U.S. Airli airlines. Delta has banned 1,600 people from flying. 
since the pandemic started. Shares trading in China's property giant Evergrande have halted. The company announced the suspension this morning. The group did not specify the reason for the halt. However, the property giant is on the hook to creditors for $300 billion. Over the last few weeks, it's warned investors of cash flow issues, saying it could default if it's unable to raise money quickly. Evergrande disclosed in a stock exchange filing this month it was having trouble finding buyers for some of its assets. Right now, 539, about 71 degrees. Well, still ahead, the Nextdoor app just launched its annual Halloween treat map, how it's helping users make their holiday plans. Plus, well, everything you need to know when it comes to the coronavirus here in San Antonio, we've got some of your top questions answered by a local doctor at UT Health San Antonio. 71 degrees at 539 this morning. Mike says you might have some lower humidity in the next couple of days. He'll explain when we come back. 542, the most recent San Antonio COVID dashboard shows our city remains at a moderate risk level, but we are improving. But there's still a lot of questions as we go forward. That's why Dr. Robert Leverance with UT Health San Antonio joined Max Massey and I on Leading SA to talk about a variety of topics associated with the pandemic. We're about 19 months into this pandemic, but there's still a lot of questions on the horizon. We are waiting for the latest when it comes to vaccines for children, and there are a lot of questions in the general public when it comes to these booster shots. Dr. Leverance joined us this weekend. We talked about a lot dealing with the pandemic. We talked booster shots, kids vaccine shots, and of course, herd immunity here in and around San Antonio. Here's a bit of our conversation. I would say we need to get up near 90% uh, uh, vaccination rate. And what does herd immunity mean? It means that so many people are immune to the virus that it cannot spread so rapidly and turn into a crisis like it has here. So eventually we'll get there, but the sooner we get there, the better. You can find the entire conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. We speak to leaders of our community about timely issues. See you guys next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. 543, about 71 degrees. Well, if you didn't buy a Powerball ticket this weekend, you still have another chance. Up next, how much money is up for grabs and your chances of winning it? It's like $1 trillion now, <laughs> right? Something like that. I mean, it's a lot of money. It's Come a on. lot. All right, Transguide right now showing 1604 at uh, Petranka right now. Steven is here. We've got a whole row of cars coming right at your screen. We'll see if there are any incidents to report coming up uh, a little bit later on. In your morning consumer headlines, biggest lottery prize in months grew larger after no ticket matched all five numbers in the Powerball drawn this weekend. Saturday night's numbers were 28, 38, 42, 47, and 52. Powerball was one. The estimated jackpot for tonight's drawing is, oh, it's not a trillion dollars, sorry. No. It's $670 million. Since August 23rd, Powerball drawings have been held three times a week to increase interest and grow prizes more quickly. Your chance of winning the jackpot is one in $292.2 million. So there's a chance. Yes. All right. Well, the neighborhood social networking site next door has just launched its annual Halloween treat map. The company is urging people to use the map to share their plans for the holiday. Next door says the map is their most popular seasonal feature. The site says if you plan on handing out treats then put the candy icon next to your home. If you are decorating, use the haunted decor icon to, to attract fright seekers. And if you're doing both, select the ghost icon. If you need an excuse to have a taco, you have one. Today is National Taco Day. Americans ate more than 4.5 billion tacos last year, according to a website dedicated to the food holiday. That equals to about an estimated 490,000 miles of tacos. We have a list of several deals available today posted right now on ksat.com. Or for those of you over 21, you can wash down those tacos with some alcohol, since today is also National Vodka Day. Although I wouldn't automatically pair tacos with vodka. No. Not going to say no. 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 Um, Steven, is t this morning a good morning to stop and get a taco with the traffic? Yes, but I want to know why is National Taco not on a Tuesday? Right? Wouldn't that make more sense? It would. Yes. Taco Tuesday? Absolutely. It would. Listen, I I'll talk about it. Uh, uh, listen, uh, right now, <laughs> things have been good so far. If you're going to grab that taco out there, Loop 410 at Broadway, just a few folks out there. So nothing too major to report in terms of incidents that are going to be causing any delays for this National Taco Day. But let's go ahead and take a look right now at the map. We want to bring your attention to this construction that's still going on out there off I-10 eastbound. Uh, we've talked about this a little bit earlier in the newscast. We're seeing a little bit of a buildup there with traffic on I-10. Right now, there is 
is a traffic moving at just 10 miles per hour, but keep in mind this should be wrapping up by October 8th, so we'll be watching that pretty closely. Uh, we also are keeping our eyes on this stall that just popped or has been there for quite a while. Loop 1604 westbound in Nacogdoches Road. Uh, again, as we continue to remind you throughout the morning, make sure that your vehicles are working properly before you get on the highways because uh, that's when we tend to start to see more stalls when we start getting more people out and about and their vehicles start to experience some trouble. So make sure everything is working properly. But if you need to head to the gas station, we got those gas prices from AAA. Uh, right now, they're reporting that the average gas price in Bear County is 272 and around the state. We're looking at 281. Now that national average was 318 and it had still held steady for probably about eight days or so. But uh, now AAA is reporting that has gone up to 320. So we'll be keeping an eye on these gas prices. And if you're heading out the door, keep your eyes on the road and both hands on the wheel. Guys, shall do. Thanks, Thank you very much, Steven. That's Mike. a beautiful pictures from over the weekend. Yeah, it's yeah. beautiful. Those skies. Yeah. Love when we get pictures coming in. Yeah, to make sure you download the app and then there's a little button at the bottom that says post pins, drop pins, and very easy to do. So, yeah, I love seeing all these gorgeous shots out there. A little bit of that uh, pinkish in the sky. And we should have some beautiful sunrises and sunsets the next few days. We've got a couple of clouds hanging around here this morning. I think it's still going to be a pretty good looking uh, sunrise and there is a little bit of fog to deal with or actually a lot of it over there around the Grange quarter mile visibility eight at Victoria. Just kind of watch it off to the east this morning. I don't think it's going to be very widespread, but you know, it can kind of pop up, especially as we approach uh, sunrise. So 71 degrees right now, 65 Ball Verde, uh, mid 60s in the hill country. These temperatures are about right now five, six degrees above normal. I think we continue to drop down a few more notches because we do have these dew point temperatures, which you know, again, you get above 60, you can kind of feel it. And then Pleasanton, yeah, that's a bunch of humidity down there. But we will still be dropping down into the uh, at least mid to upper 60s before it's all said and done, before we start the, the warming process. And we are also going to continue to get drier air coming on in here, not just the usual drop in the humidity, but more dry air will continue to pump on in here on these northerly winds throughout the day. So that's going to make for some really pleasant temperatures in the afternoons, despite the fact, though, because warm air doesn't hold the heat in, but on the flip side, it heats up very easily. So we're going to be seeing 30 degree swings from the low to the high temperature as we get into the next few days and actually the rest of the work in the school week because of this really dry air that is in place. It's going to be comfortable, though, coolish in the morning, warm in the afternoon. A couple of clouds hanging around right now. Like I said, I think we'll still have a good looking sunrise and then those clouds are going to be getting on out of here as the uh, the day rolls on and there's nothing upstream for us right now. We've just got a good looking forecast in store and uh, as far as any precipitation in cloud cover, nothing throughout the rest of the week. So good thing we had some of the rain last week because that's it. I mean, there's just no changes to this couple of extra clouds around here, maybe in the mornings over the weekend. We will see more humidity coming in here toward the weekend late on Sunday. Uh, even though this computer model doesn't show it, there's a very, very small chance for a couple of showers, maybe one or two of them then by Monday around here. But that's really the first opportunity for any rain won't be until a week from today. 83 degrees at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to the upper 80s. So in a few degrees above normal, much, much lower humidity. This this afternoon, so it's going to be really comfortable this afternoon. And then again, with the low humidity out there, we're going to see pretty much 30 degree swings in temperatures throughout the rest of the week. Cool mornings, warm afternoons, plenty of sunshine, more humid this weekend, and maybe even a couple of showers or two by Sunday. Sarah, Mark. Thank you, Mike. 552, about 71 degrees. We'll show off your artistic skills and win an iPad mini. Coming up after the break, details on KSAT's Hispanic Heritage Contest. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the coast-to-coast -coast vaccine mandate debates. California now becoming the first state to require students and teachers to get vaccinated. And nearly 150,000 New York City school employees are facing the deadline today to get the shot. We're going to have the latest on the pandemic and so much more right here on GMA. Be glad we get to have real ice cream. <laughs>
Musical turned movie Dear Evan Hansen debuted in second place last weekend, but tanked all the way down to fifth place this weekend with $2.5 million. I don't cry, it's only me, Uncle Tony. Oh. The Sopranos prequel film The Many Saints of Newark made off with $5 million and a fourth place debut. And after ruling the box office in September, Disney Marvel's Shang-Chi and The Legend of the Ten Rings fell from first to third on ticket sales of just over $6 million. This is the third dinner Wednesday has skipped this week. Debuting in second place is the animated adventure The Addams Family 2, which scared up $18 million. This is about me wanting to live without you. Marvel's box office hero Shang-Chi was defeated by a Marvel anti-hero. Venom, Let There Be Carnage, set a new pandemic-era milestone with its $90.1 million debut, besting Black Widow's three-day opening of $80.4 million. The Hollywood Reporter says Carnage surpassed Pundit's predictions by $25 to $30 million. The original Venom opened in October 2018 to 80.3 million. In Hollywood, I'm Rick Damagella. I'm sorry, I don't know. In celebration of Hispanic Heritage Month, KSAT is calling on all kids to show off their artistic skills for a chance to win an iPad Mini. Right now on our website, you can print out a blank canvas of a skull or calavera. The skull is commonly used during Day of the Dead to honor loved ones, but if you have to hurry because the contest ends this Friday. For more information and contest details, head on over to ksat.com. Still ahead on GMSA, a young Midwestern boy makes a shocking discovery. We'll tell you why it's got everyone talking. And the search continues for two men who rammed into a Bear County Sheriff's deputy in a West Side neighborhood over the weekend. We'll have those details. And Stephen is tracking traffic. 410 at McCullough. No problems to report. There's I-10 at Camp Bullis out there on the far northwest side. And Mike has your forecast coming up. You're watching GMSA. A man's in the hospital, two people on the run following an overnight shooting at a northeast side apartment. We have details. 71 at 6 a.m. this morning. If you're not a fan of humidity, Mike says we might be lowering the dial on humidity this week. He'll explain in just a bit. Live from Case at 12. Good morning, San Antonio starts right now. We sure hope you had a great weekend. Good morning, everybody. It is Monday, October 4th. Happy Monday. Thank you so much for starting your morning with us. I'm happy to be back on the desk here this morning. And what a wonderful, I, I mean, I had a wonderful weekend because I put my Halloween decorations out. I know it was still like super humid and stuff, but like you said earlier, will it, you know, maybe fall will actually... Well, it feels a little better this morning, though, right? It feels a little better, but Mike, it's going to be feeling a little better for the next couple yes. of days. Yeah, the humidity is going to continue to drop down. It's still kind of there this morning, not like what it was over uh, Saturday when it was very, very high yesterday morning, and then it's going to drop down throughout the rest of the week. As far as really crisp, cold temperatures, we're not there yet. Not quite. It will be cooler in the mornings uh, the next few days and then actually throughout the rest of the week. And then uh, it's going to be very warm in the afternoon, however. So it's going to be kind of a mixture of, you know, fall mornings, summer afternoons, if you will. Visibility has now dropped to six miles there at uh, Port SA. So you want to watch out for a little bit of fog showing up. Just a couple of minutes ago, it was down to a quarter mile at uh, LaGrange. Now it's back up to seven. So we're kind of flirting with this. So just in places, watch out for just a uh, speck or two of fog. Temperatures right now are in the uh, kind of mid 60s in parts of the hill country, mid upper 60s, low 70s here in town. Mold is on the high side. The updated count is going to be coming out in about an hour, hour and a half or so. Mold should be dropping down over the course of the next couple of days with the very dry air coming on in here. Ragweed is moderate. Fall elm is low and temperatures. I think we continue to drop down a few more degrees in the next couple of hours and then start a nice big warm up and not really today. Today's going to be about a Oh, say 25 degree warm up, but over the course of the next couple of days, it's going to be 30 degrees from the low to the high. Good indication of some really dry air out there. It'll be comfortable this afternoon, although a few degrees above normal, 88 for a high temperature. So good looking sunrises, good looking sunsets. Is there anything that really looks like fall weather down the road? We'll take a look ahead in just a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, up to now, it's been kind of quiet. 
Yeah, and if you're just waking up with us right now, uh, we want to update you on some issues that have been, I would say, plaguing the road, but nothing too major right now. But first, we want to start off with a look at Trans Guy. Loop 410 at McCullough, pretty quiet there. I-10 at Camp Bullis, a little dark out there. Make sure that you are driving with caution. Traffic has been light for the most part throughout the morning. I-35 at Alamo looks like it's picking up there just a bit. But again, if you are waking up with us right now, we first want to bring your attention to that construction we've been talking about right along here on GMSA. I-10 eastbound and westbound a great town road. Uh, there has been some construction that's been leading to some buildup there, but right now take a look. It is pretty green on the screen right now. 71 miles is where traffic is moving, so uh, they may have wrapped that up, but keep in mind, make sure that you're marking your calendars because this will be going on up until October 8th. So again, plan accordingly, and we still have that stalled vehicle out over there. I was just checking the TxDOT website. Uh, we are still seeing that stall at loop 1604 westbound right at Nacogdoches, but thankfully, as Mike was mentioning, we have haven't had many issues out there this morning. Overnight there was a pretty big crash, but that cleared out just before we started the show here. Right now, though, if you're heading to San Antonio, things are still pretty green across the board. Even coming in from Pleasanton, pretty pleasant on 37 with 27 minutes, and even on Highway 90, just 19 minutes right now to the downtown San Antonio area. So very good news, especially as we're starting a new work week. 281 there, and we got a shot at Loop 410 again once more at McCullough. Things are picking up, but again, make sure that you're driving with caution and make sure you're checking those vehicles before you get out on the roadways. Guys. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, a man fighting for his life after a shooting at a northeast side apartment complex. It's all unfolded just after 11 last night in the 14,000 block of Judson Road. Police say the 21 year old man was in the parking lot of the Judson Meadow Apartments when he was approached by two men wearing ski masks. The two suspects held the victim at gunpoint, shot him in the stomach when he refused to give them money. The shooting caused the victim to crash his vehicle into other vehicles in the parking lot. He was taken to the hospital in critical condition. So far, no arrests have been made. Well, the search continues for two men who rammed a Bear County deputy's vehicle in a far west side neighborhood. It happened Saturday morning in the 200 block of Coriander Bend. That's off of Petranco Road. We're told deputies were responding to a domestic violence call. That's when a suspect rammed a deputy's vehicle. Sheriff Javier Salazar says nearby surveillance video showed two men getting out of the vehicle and running toward a wooded area. Neighbors say they hope the suspects are caught soon. One simple mistake and you keep making more, it's going to just, you know, bury you down in that hole. And right away, we all sat there and made sure that we, you know, checked on each other. You're going to get caught one way or another. It's better just to sit there and, you know, man up and take whatever happens to you rather than cause any issues. If you have any information about where these suspects may be, you're asked to call that number on your screen, 210-335-6000. Francis Haugen, an ex-product manager at Facebook, alleges the company contributed to the deadly January 6th invasion of the U.S. Capitol. Haugen also says a 2018 change to Facebook's news feed contributed to more divisiveness and ill will in a network created to bring people closer together. Facebook says Haugen's allegations are misleading and insists there's no evidence to support those allegations. Supreme Court convenes today to begin a new term. It will be the first time in more than a year that the justices meet in person in their chamber. All of them, except Brett Kavanaugh, who just tested positive for COVID-19, are expected to be on the bench today. In the coming months, the nine justices are expected to tackle issues like abortion, the Second Amendment, religious liberty, and possibly affirmative action. New this morning, the Nobel Prize in the field of physiology or medicine has been awarded to two U.S. scientists. They received the honor for their discovery of receptors for temperature and touch. One of the scientists used chili peppers to identify the nerve centers that allow the skin to respond to heat. The other scientist found separate pressure sensitive sensors and cells that respond to mechanical stimulation. They will receive more than one million dollars in prize money. Read more about the American scientists on ksat.com. Congratulations to you both. On the COVID front this morning, some good news, a notable decline in coronavirus related hospitalizations around the country for the first time in three months. But health officials warn we are not out of the woods yet. This as vaccine mandates are set to go in effect around the country. ABC's Dan Lieberman has the latest. With the U.S. death toll from COVID now more than 700,000, vaccine mandates going into effect today that will cost some people their jobs if they don't have at least one shot. I felt shocked, surprised, heartbroken, 
my students messaged me Friday. I am not allowed to talk to them, even though I gave them a heads up that this is it. In New York City, the nation's largest school district, more than 93 percent of teachers have had at least one shot, well above the national average. I cannot imagine giving up my 24 year career because I didn't get a vaccine. The more people get vaccinated, hopefully the more lives we could save. And so I was all for the vaccine mandate. In Connecticut, the National Guard is standing by to fill any critical shortages as a mandate for state employees takes effect tonight. There will be some people who say, hell no. And um, I'm sorry, but um, that means you're not safe. You're not safe to the people around you. And in California, the governor taking a first in the nation step, mandating the shot for all public school students. Dr. Anthony Fauci reminding people vaccine mandates are nothing new. We have made it a requirement for children to get into schools to get different types of vaccines. So when people treat this as something novel and terrible, it isn't. While COVID-related hospitalizations are down, Dr. Fauci also warning people not to let their guard down, even when it comes to making those holiday plans with family. It's just too soon to tell. We've just got to concentrate on continuing to get those numbers down and not try yeah. to jump ahead by weeks or months and say what we're going to do. Dan Lieberman, ABC News, New York. Well, many people are moving on to booster shots, but Metro Health is still offering first and second vaccine shots for those who still need it. The next pop-up clinic is scheduled for tomorrow at the Antioch Sports Complex off Eero Street. The Pfizer vaccine will be given out from 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. For more information about the coronavirus vaccine and pop-up clinics, head over to ksat.com. Time check, 609, about 71 degrees. Still to come, a six-year-old Michigan boy has some serious bragging rights this morning after making a shocking discovery while hiking with his family. You don't want to miss what he found that has a lot of people buzzing this morning. And still ahead, have you been the victim of porch pirates? We've got some pro tips on how to protect your packages. Pro football coverage, powered by Davis Law Firm. We'll get to the stories in a few minutes, but first week four, the NFL in the books for the Cowboys and Texans. Dallas comes away with a big win yesterday against a very good Carolina Panthers team. Final there, Dallas wins 36-28. Cowboys will host the NFC East rival New York Giants in a late afternoon matchup coming up on Sunday. Things not so great for Houston. The Texans returning home following a 40-0 blowout loss to Buffalo. Houston now preparing for the Patriots coming to town next week. 71 degrees at 610 this morning. If you're looking for some fall temperatures, Mike says maybe this week. He'll explain when we come back. So you have nice neighbors, you live in a gated community, well-lit streets, you may think your neighborhood is a safe place, but that won't stop porch pirates from stealing your packages. Thousands of Americans fall prey to porch pirates every single day. Our David Sears has details on how you might be able to stop them. Porch pirates, they strike in the middle of the day, in good neighborhoods and bad. Even if you are home um, and they leave and they don't knock, um, the package could just be left uh, right there on the front door. According to the American Journal of Criminal Justice, 23% of people surveyed say they've been victims of porch piracy. So how can you protect yourself? First, put up security signs at the end of your driveway. Let them know they are being monitored. That way, the thieves will not risk stealing anything from your porch. If you have Amazon Prime, consider using an Amazon locker and deliver it there instead or Use the app Amazon Key, which lets delivery drivers leave your package inside your home. Package lock boxes, another option. These can be installed near or in conjunction with your mailbox. Even a non-locking box prevents theft by concealing your deliveries. So space out your packages, your delivery, um, or uh, if there's some places have boxes, delivery boxes, that you can go and pick them up, that's also another option. David Sears, KSAT 12 News. 615. We're going to check in with Stephen. Any issues on the road? 
Well, we do have some flashing lights out there here on the shot at Transguy 281 at Bassey Road. Uh, there's been a few issues out there this morning. This is actually a stalled vehicle uh, reported there in the southbound lanes of 281. Uh, earlier, there was a stalled vehicle over in the northbound lanes. If you were with us throughout the morning, uh, it has been one of those stalls. That, uh, one of the mornings of stalls, I should say, but taking you to the map right now, it's not causing any issues. There's no delays on the southbound lanes of 281 again, but that is right there along Bassey Road. Make sure you are checking those vehicles because it has not been the only stall that that we've been talking about. This one thankfully has just cleared from the TechSot website loop 1604 westbound at Nacogdoches that had been there for over an hour, but now it has been cleared from that website. So things have been looking good, but we want to jump over back here to the northwest side. If you are just waking up with us this morning, make sure that you are planning accordingly for the rest of the week. Two weeks actually there is some utility work in the eastbound lanes of Hosman Road from loop 1604 to Kyle Seal. Now this is part of the 1604 North expansion project. We've been talking about this a few times here. Uh, it's happening from Monday, October 4th up until October 18th. So that is a two week deal. Make sure that traffic if you're planning on detour traffic that is will be detoured to Kyle Seal Parkway to access West Hausman Road. So make, again, make sure you are planning accordingly. However, as we take a wider look at the map, it does look like another stall popped up there off 410. We'll be watching that closely, but again, make sure you're checking your vehicles closely. 281 at Bassey. We do have traffic that is moving pretty smoothly through there, but as always, make sure you are driving with caution. Mike. Thank you very much, sir. And I'm just redoing my uh, little graphic over here. I'll tell you what, I'm just going to skip past this one and get right to it. It's uh, a fairly nice morning when we step when we uh, start off this morning. I forgot to update my little bus stop thing, though. Sorry, sorry about that. Here's a picture of uh, some of the uh, clouds that we had over the weekend, and it has been absolutely gorgeous this weekend with some of these high wispy clouds that have been out here and that have been out there. And this morning we're going to have uh, kind of a little bit of a cloudy start. We've got a few of them hanging around. You can see just a couple of them there and look at that little sliver of the moon. Okay, when's the last time we saw that? That's perfect looking. Little Cheshire cat grin out there with the moon. So, all right, temperatures, normal high temperatures right now uh, are at 86 and 64. And what's interesting is, so in the next week, it only drops down two degrees on each end of the scale. Then as we go in toward the middle and the end of October, we're going to be dropping down about three degrees per week as far as the normal, the average temperatures. So we'll go from uh, 83 and 61 on the 15th and and again, knock off three degrees on each end of the scale. And by Halloween, the average temperature is 77 and 55. Then it starts to sort of um, kind of plateau a little bit. So we're getting into the steepest decline as we get into the mid and latter portion of October into the first of November. And by well, right around the end of November, Thanksgiving time, we're looking at uh, about 70 or upper 60s and 50s, or excuse me, upper 40s for the normal or average temperatures. All right, we're watching for a little bit of fog around. We've got some around LaGrange as well as Victoria this morning. Elsewhere, it's not too bad. Watch it around Port SA. There's been a, a hint of it right now. 71 here in town, 68 Randolph, 74 at Stinson and out in the tropics. We've got uh, Sam and Victor. That's Sam and that's Victor. Both of those are heading kind of off into the uh, North Atlantic, so nothing out there as far as we are concerned and there is nothing as far as the tropics are concerned that's going to be affecting us at all. As a matter of fact, it's a very kind of boring week coming up. Morning's going to be nice and pleasant. It's going to be pleasant during the day, but it's going to be on the warm side in the afternoons. 83 partly cloudy skies at noon today and then a high temperature. We're going to make it up to 88. Normal average is 86 right now with mostly sunny skies. And then over the next couple of days with this drier air in place, that's going to make for some nice, pleasant mornings. 60, give or take here in town. So uh, knock off maybe seven, 10 degrees in the hill country. So we're it's going to be chilly in the mornings and then nice in the afternoons right around upper 80s to 90 on the hot side, though, but low humidity. Wow, almost no rain in that forecast. Uh, maybe maybe a shower by late Sunday or perhaps by uh, Monday. So good thing we got rain last week. So. Yeah. Fair enough. Yeah. All right, thank you, Mike. Right now, about 619, 71 degrees. Still ahead, new details in the search for Brian Laundry. A hiker in North Carolina says he had an encounter with him along the Appalachian Trail. That's ahead in your GMA First Look. <laughs> Kim is now demonstrating her congestion. Save it, slime ball. I've upgraded to Mucinex. We still have 12 hours to Australia. Mucinex lasts 12 hours, so I'm good. Now move. Kim, no! Mucinex lasts three times longer for 12 hours. The number one brand doctors trust.
Let's create your trademark style at Macy's VIP sale with an extra 30% off top designers, plus 15% off fragrances, skincare, makeup, and more. Now at Macy's. Most bladder leak pads were similar until Always Discreet invented a pad that protects differently with two rapid dry layers for strong protection that's always discreet. Question your protection. Try Always Discreet. In this morning's GMA First Look, the all-out manhunt for Gabby Petito's boyfriend, Ryan Laundrie. The desperate search intensifying. It's been nearly three weeks since Ryan was last seen. Police in North Carolina monitoring dozens of reports of possible sightings, but none of the claims have checked out. But on Saturday morning, Dennis Davis says he was near the Tennessee-North Carolina border on the Appalachian Trail when he says he pulled up beside someone who looked like laundry. Yeah, the guy was acting very weird. Immediately, I could tell there was something wrong with the guy. And I asked myself, I mean, could that be Brian Laundry? I pulled up on my phone and, and looked at a picture of him, and I was like, man, that was him. Davis says he called the FBI twice and reported the encounter to local authorities. And we'll have the very latest on this urgent manhunt coming up at 7 a.m. With your GMA First Look, I'm Victor Okendo, ABC News, Miami. This week on What's Up South Texas, a 14-year-old takes us on a journey through his creative and intricate artwork. 14-year-old Cypress Rabke draws intricate pieces varying in size from tiny to large. His favorite pieces involve reptiles and love for nature. His mother says his pen is always moving. He would get in a little bit of trouble at school for all of the drawing <laughs> that he did. I, I still doodle in class, but and teachers don't really get mad at me because I, well, either they don't realize it or I do it and also do the work. Cypress hopes his extraordinarily uh, detailed artwork inspires others to pick up a pen and draw. For more on this story and other st stories featured on What's Up South Texas, click on this tab on our website at ksat.com. Well, a six-year-old boy in Michigan is in the spotlight this morning after making a surprising discovery while he was hiking with his family. They first thought it was just a rock, but little Julian Ganyan knew it was much more, and it's a good thing he trusted his instincts. Turns out it was a tooth from an ancient mastodon. Well, I kind of, when I got home, I got, like, gunk off of it from, like, the 12,000 years because they had it not be white forever. Anyways, so I got that off, and I saw white on it. I love that. Can we just have more of this kid? <laughs> yes, please. The University of Michigan's Museum of Paleontology says Julian is likely the first person ever to touch the tooth. That's crazy. What's weird is, is when I think Mastodon, I think those long tusks. Yeah. So, but this looked like... It was one of the yeah one of their I love the, the molars the or whatever. Twelve thousand years of gunk oh, on yeah. it. <laughs> yeah, we need more of this kid for sure. It's fun. Six twenty-five, about seventy-one degrees on your Monday morning. Still ahead on GMSA, an overnight fire on the north side causes nearly one hundred thousand dollars in damages. We'll have those details. Uh, checking the roads with Transguide, flashing lights out there at two to one at Bassey. Don't have a direction there in the dark, but we'll find out some more information hopefully with Stephen Cavazos coming up right here on GMSA on your early Monday morning. Thanks for starting your day with us. We will be right back. From a meetup to a medical emergency is how the night went for one man. Good morning, I'm Katrina Weber. San Antonio police say that man was shot after trying to meet up with someone on the northeast side. I'll tell you more about it. This morning, uh, the interesting twist on the weather is, according to Mike Ostrage, we have lower humidity, but fog has been a problem in some parts of our area. We'll talk to him in just a moment. Good morning. It's Monday, October 4th. Happy to be here. I, I, I love fall. I love that we're doing this. I went to HEB yesterday to get some pumpkins and they do such a good job of making you buy all the gourds. They're like, here's a bag of six little funky looking gourds. Nice. So of course I bought, you know, one bag. I'm probably gonna go back and buy another bag and just scatter them around the porch. Well, they are everywhere, just outside. <laughs> Most of the HEBs around here, including some of those that are like this big the, the around. Big... I don't even know how you'd get it in your truck. Oh yeah, you need yeah. it. So talk about fall yeah. and Halloween decorations. Yeah. Um, there's already Christmas set up in Walmart. Oh, really? Did you make you upset? You look a little upset about it. I don't, I, you know, not, you can't, let's go through Halloween first. 
Yeah. And no, then, I agree. Yeah. I agree. Because then the problem is, if you need something for Christmas uh, by after the 15th of December, it's gone. It's gone. Yeah. So, I agree. Yeah. No. And then, you know, don't bring out the Hallmark Christmas movies too soon. So, <laughs> wait, yeah, what? Kind of this is you. Not too soon. Okay, but you're, you'll, soon. First you'll take those. First of November needs, is fine. He needs so. his free form 31 yeah. days of Halloween movies first. Baby yeah. steps with Mike Osterhage. Anyway, watch Children of the Corn over the weekend. Oh, come on. <laughs> not a good movie. It was not good. I, I had never seen it before. You anyway. went from Hallmark to that? <laughs> <laughs> she was talking about the 31 days of Halloween. Anyway, hi. It's a nice morning. Yes, the humidity is lower than what it was at this time yesterday. Dew points at 63, which means you can sort of uh, sort of tell there's some humidity out there. Temperatures at 71 right now. And yes, despite the fact that it has dropped down, still relative to the temperature, we've got some higher humidity, and that is causing a little bit of reduced visibility there at Port SA. Lagrange was at a quarter mile, went up to seven, back down to a half mile visibility. So we're just watching a little bit of this fog here and there because there's still a, a bunch of humidity off to the east that hasn't cleared off as of yet or cleared out, I should say, as of yet. Mold is on the high side. Ragweed moderate fall elm is low. Mold should be going down the rest of the week given the fact that we've got a lot of dry air coming on in here. So partly cloudy. It's nice this morning. Uh, nothing too extreme. We're actually a little bit above normal as far as temperatures. Today, mostly sunny skies. The humidity will continue to drop down throughout the day and we are going to be in the upper 80s and and it's going to be a good looking week. Cool mornings. Very nice. Thanks to low humidity. Then it's going to warm up quite a bit and we'll have some nice afternoons, although we will be about four or five degrees above normal, though with that dry air in place. And so we're going to be seeing 30 degree swings in temperatures. Probably need a light jacket sweatshirt in the morning then you won't need in the afternoon. Now by the weekend, humidity is going to start to work its way back in here and we may actually see a shower or two Sunday. Very small possibility and then perhaps going into a week from today. More on the weekend forecast coming up in a couple of minutes. Traffic Authority, Stephen Cavazos, anything going on? You haven't had a lot to talk oh, about. I so think it's a good, morning. yeah, it's a good start to the morning, a good start to the week that is as well. 281 at Bass, he does show, uh, we have a car that was experiencing some trouble out there. We showed you that there was a text out here, a truck that was likely assisting that driver uh, from this shot at Transguide traffic moving in this direction, but uh, make sure that you are moving over, slowing down to it when you see a vehicle that's experiencing any trouble out there because uh, that driver is obviously trying to work to get out of the way. But let's go ahead and take you to the map right now because that is reported in the southbound lanes of 281 again right at Bassey. We're not seeing a buildup of traffic, but as you just saw, it is getting a little bit busier out on the roadways. Uh, taking you up over here, though, Loop 410 westbound at Military Highway. We got another stall there. It is shaping up to be a morning of stalls. As a reminder, check those vehicles before you get out there this morning because that has been the trending problem at least so far, but as we take you to the map, uh, the inbound times that is the good news is it is still pretty green across the board. If you plan on traveling to San Antonio there in the next few moments, not going to experience any delays at that this hour. So uh, if you're heading out the door, no need to rush. Grab that cup of coffee and enjoy the ride here to San Antonio. But one last look at 281 at Bassey. It is picking up a little bit there. So again, make sure that you're driving with caution and check those vehicles before you get on the roads. Mark Sarah. Thank you, Stephen. New this morning, San Antonio police say a man headed to a late night meetup instead was met by masked men and one of them shot him. This happened in an apartment complex on Judson Road, not far from Nacogdoches. Our Katrina Weber is live at public safety headquarters. Katrina, are there any updates on the victim? What police told us is that he was in critical condition as he was rushed to a hospital late last night. Now, police say that this shooting happened after 11 last night at the Judson Meadow Apartments. They say the victim, who's in his 20s, and a passenger in this car had just arrived at the apartment complex to meet up with someone. That's when two gunmen in ski masks approached them and demanded money. The police say the victim tried to escape by putting his car in reverse, but one of the gunmen fired at him, hitting him in his upper body. Of the shooter and the other gunmen were gone by the time police arrived and they have not found them yet. Reporting live from Public Safety Headquarters, Katrina Weber, KSAT 12 News. Thank you, Katrina. We'll also new this morning. Cleanup is underway following a big fire at a pool house on the city's north side. It happened around 1030 last night. In the 2300, 23,000 block of Calico Chase. That's in the Stone Oak area. No one was hurt in the fire, but firefighters say the roof and the back patio cover collapsed and damages are estimated around $90,000. No word yet 
on what sparked that fire. This morning, an environmental disaster off the coast of California. A leak from an underwater oil pipeline has spilled more than 120,000 gallons of crude oil into the Pacific, possibly up to 144,000 gallons. So officials say the pipeline has been capped and oil is no longer leaking. Now the race is on to stop the oil from spreading. ABC's Faith Abube has the latest. This morning, crews scrambling to clean up a devastating oil spill in Southern California. This oil spill constitutes one of the most devastating situations that our community has dealt with in decades. There's oil deposits all along the shore, and um, you can see the oil slicks out in the ocean. At least 126,000 gallons of oil pouring into the Pacific, forming an oil slick 13 square miles in size. The spill, one of the worst in California's history. Crude oil smearing the coastline from Huntington to Newport Beach, encroaching on critical habitats and wetlands. We are starting to see oil covered fish and birds washing up along our coastline. The noxious goo forcing popular beaches to close due to potential health hazards. Oil spill affects humans' health directly as well as indirectly. My throat hurt and, um, and, and you can feel the vapor in the air. Officials say the leak was caused by a broken pipeline about four and a half miles offshore. The entire amount of oil in that line released into the ocean. The company that owns the pipeline, Beta Offshore, is pledging full cooperation in the wake of the disaster. Meanwhile, crews have deployed skimming equipment and booms to prevent the oil from flowing into a nearby ecological reserve. Still, experts fear the damage may be irreversible. So there's a lot of different chemicals that are in the oil. Some of them will actually dissolve in water, um, which is bad news for the fish. And this bill is much smaller than the 2010 Gulf oil disaster. But experts say because this bill is closer to the shore, the ocean's natural cleaning ability won't be as effective. Faith Abube, ABC News, New York. Nearly a dozen people are dead this morning following a jet crash in Italy. It happened yesterday right after that jet took off. Officials there say the aircraft crashed into an uninhabited office building in the suburbs of Milan. Eight passengers were killed. At this time, the cause of the crash has not yet been determined. Well, United Airlines says it's banned more than 700 unruly passengers so far during the pandemic. United CEO Scott Kirby says that's actually pretty low compared to the number of customers overall. Right now, the airline is serving, servicing close to 3 million customers a week. Kirby credits the de-escalation training giving, given to the United flight attendants for having lower rates of incidents over mask violations. The most recent San Antonio COVID numbers show our city is at a moderate risk level and things are improving. But there are a lot of questions going forward. That's why Dr. Leverance with UT Health San Antonio joined us on Leading SA this weekend to talk about a variety of topics associated with the pandemic. We're about 19 months into this pandemic, but there's still a lot of questions on the horizon. We are waiting for the latest when it comes to vaccines for children, and there are a lot of questions in the general public when it comes to these booster shots. Dr. Leverance joined us this weekend. We talked about a lot dealing with the pandemic. We talked booster shots, kids vaccine shots, and of course, herd immunity here in and around San Antonio. Here's a bit of our conversation. I would say we need to get up near 90% uh, uh, vaccination rate. And what does herd immunity mean? It means that so many people are immune to the virus that it cannot spread so rapidly and turn into a crisis like it has here. So eventually we'll get there, but the sooner we get there, the better. You can find the entire conversation right now. Just head to the Leading SA section of KSAT.com. We have Leading SA every Sunday at 8 a.m. We speak to leaders of our community about timely issues. See you guys next Sunday. Back to you. Thank you, Max. With computer chips still in short supply around the world, the makers of medical devices say they should be the, at the front of the line. The Wall Street Journal says the makers of MRIs and blood sugar monitors have at times been successful in using the argument their devices save li lives to convince chip makers to fill their orders first over motor vehicles and consumer electronics. Well, more potential home buyers are having trouble affording mortgage payments. Historically low interest rates are being canceled out by fast rising home prices. The Federal Reserve Bank of Atlanta now says the median American household would need to spend over 32 percent of its income on a typical home. That's the most since November of 2008. Wow. OK, 640, about 71 degrees. Still ahead on GMSA, find out what inspired a local TikToker to showcase our city's great cuisine. 
But with thousands of followers, a local TikToker has discovered the path to San Antonio's heart and its food. KSAT producer Alexis Page with the creator of the Siempre San Antonio TikTok account and found out what inspired her to highlight our city's best eats and treats. With two simple words. Hey friends, have you tried? Hey friends, mochi nut. Hey friends. Gabrielle Gonzalez invites people on a journey to discover new foods available in the city she loves. Love San Antonio. <laughs> I literally rock San Antonio all the time when it comes to shirts and earrings. She's the creator behind the ever so popular Siempre San Antonio TikTok account. Hey friends, swing by Chimoy City Limits. They have so many mouthwatering treats to choose from. I started going on TikTok, yes, due to the pandemic. I was just scrolling through TikToks. Um, and then I said, oh, I can make these myself. Now, with more than 250 videos and nearly 80,000 followers later, Gabrielle is making waves in the community. I didn't think that I was going to love video as much as I do. It's just like it reached so many more people on TikTok. It's amazing. Growing up on the south side, Gabrielle says she wants everyone to see all the parts of San Antonio that she loves. I'm so grateful for the platform that I have because it has helped me branch out to, see, to look at other sides of town. So I've been to the east side a lot, to the west side a lot. There's so much culture, there's so much food, there's so much art. Especially local businesses. Because local businesses are what make us unique as a city. One of her first videos was about Cosmocones off Babcock Road and UTSA Boulevard. Crystal Bless was in shock when she saw the video about her at the time month old shaved ice business. And all of a sudden we just started having people, you know, like pour in as a direct result of her posting this TikTok. Siempre San Antonio has gotten so popular that now businesses are reaching out to her directly. Like Sticks and Stones, located off of Warsbach Road, who allowed Gabrielle to get a tasting in order to make the best video for her followers. It's our house-made salsa matcha. As Gabrielle waits to hit that 100,000 follower milestone, she'll continue to make the videos that bring her joy. So it's awesome to be able to show people that our city has so much to offer when it comes to food, when it comes to culture, when it comes to events, when it comes to activities, there's so much that we can, you can do here in San Antonio. So I love to feature that. Alexis Page, KSET 12 News. One of those kind of accidental content creators has kind of created a whole new life for herself. Yeah, and there's nothing easier to watch on social media than videos of food. That's pretty cool stuff. And it's not just food on her TikTok. No, I love all the culture yeah. too. Great story. Steven. How's the traffic looking out there? Hey, good morning, everyone. Well, things have been looking pretty good here. Traffic picking up there at 35 at Alamo. Let's go ahead and jump over here to this shot at Transguide. Show you how things are looking around town. 35 at South Cross. Traffic a little light there, but uh, it has been a pretty quiet morning. There's not been a lot of issues out there. However, the trending problem has been those stalls that we've been talking about. This one, thankfully, some good news there. It looks like it just cleared from our map. Loop 410 westbound at Military Highway wasn't causing any issues, but as we mentioned, those continue further down. Too many southbound at Bassey Road. We do have another stall reported there a little bit further down on 281 southbound. We do have another stall at East Almost Drive. It is shaping up to be one of those mornings. So again, as always, make sure you are checking those vehicles. We have two more that looks like they just popped up there on our map. So of course, we want to remind you of some friendly services. If you start to experience some trouble on the highway, uh, the TxDOT Hero program is a great, great facet of TxDOT. They assist drivers with a multitude of services, and that includes adding gasoline and water, performing mine or vehicle repairs, jump starting batteries and providing drinking water and cell phone services to stranded motorists. They even help clear crashings whenever you see those pesky issues out there on the roadways. Their number 210-732-HERO. Keep in mind, you must be stranded on the highway to receive that assistance. But the best thing you can do for yourself is, of course, make sure that you are checking your vehicle. Make sure that it is working properly. Traffic is picking up, so it is going to get busier here in the next few moments. But for now, let's head over to Mike. He's got something picture perfect to look at. Yes, indeed. I was just thinking about those TikTok videos. Now I'm really hungry after seeing all that. But oh, this is a gorgeous picture from Mr. Anger Miller over there at Hondo Creek. Beautiful and the wildflowers in the foreground. Thank you very much for that one. And uh, sun's not coming up till almost 730 now, so we're not even really seeing now well, maybe lightening up a little bit. We do have some clouds out there. A hint of fog around Port SA. Not bad. And then over there around LaGrange, where you've been dealing with a lot of fog this morning. So obviously it's not a widespread situation, but just a, a hint here and there. Humidity, which 
kind of feel it when you step outside this morning is going to be dropping down this afternoon and staying on the low side throughout the rest of the week. So what this means is since dry air doesn't hold the heat in very well, we're going to have cool mornings, but then it heats up very quickly. So we'll have warm afternoons and each end of the spectrum is going to be um, below and above its respective normal. So below normal low temperatures, above normal high temperatures this week. There's some of the uh, leftover clouds that we have hanging around here. Those will continue to clear out a couple of them left over today. And then again, upstream, that's what's in store for really the rest of the week. Nothing out there. We'll have plenty of sunshine and this area of high pressure down there in Mexico is pretty much kind of dominating our weather. It's in in conjunction with this low is keeping us in this northerly flow and that's going to to continue to, to keep the humidity on the lower side throughout the uh, the rest of the week. And that's not going to be close enough to do anything as far as any rain. We're on the dry side of it anyway. And that's again the, the whole situation through uh, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. As this moves back in here, though, we are going to start to see a return of the humidity and then a little bit of a uh, front's going to try and work its way through here, perhaps Sunday into Monday to give us a chance for some rain, very small chance of rain. That big trough developing out there to the west, that would be nice to uh, hopefully maybe late next week, pull some sort of a front through here, but that's still kind of a, a wait and see situation. 83 degrees today at noon, partly cloudy skies. High temperature is going to make it up to then 88, mostly sunny skies. And then the rest of the week looks absolutely fantastic. Again, low temperatures are going to be below normal thanks to the very dry air. And then high temperatures are going to be on the warm side of things above normal. 86 and uh, right around 64 are the normals for the high and the low respectively. Plenty of sunshine. Again, low humidity. We get those 30 degrees swings in temperatures. A bit more humidity comes in here over the weekend and maybe a couple of showers by late Sunday into Monday of next week. Uh, welcome to fall in San Antonio, <laughs> Texas. Yeah. yeah, at least it'll be nice when you step outside in the morning. Kind That's of, true. Kind of yeah. brisk ish. The silver lining right there. Thank you, Mike. Right now about 650, 70 degrees. Well, tamales have always been a South Texas staple. Tomorrow on GMSA, we take a look at the historical roots tamales have in Hispanic culture. Outside with live cam, the news you need to know before you go is coming up right here on GMSA. Waiting for the sun to come up. Quite a few clouds obscuring our early morning sunrise. We'll be back. Good morning. Coming up here on GMA, the coast to coast vaccine mandate debates. California now becoming the first state to require students and teachers to get vaccinated. And nearly 150,000 New York City school employees are facing the deadline today to get the shot. We're going to have the latest on the pandemic and so much more right here on GMA. In a new book, a veteran sharing his experience after working at a shelter for unaccompanied minors. He says he's not talking politics as in instead focusing on the kids. Coming up today on GMSA, Alicia Barrera introduces us to the author and what he wants to achieve with his new book. That's today at nine. Right now it's about five till seven. We're going to check in the roads one last time with Stephen Cavazos. Thank you, Mark. Sarah, it is picking up now that we are inching closer to that morning rush. 35 at Alamo. You can see a little bit of a light shot there when it comes to the traffic, but the incidents are starting to pick up. Let's go ahead and take you to our map. We do have one here off I-10 westbound at Ackerman Road. You can see traffic, though, building in at 410. Texas has listed a crash in that area, although we have not spotted anything. Use caution. Uh, stalled there off 281 southbound at Bassey Road and went a little bit further down. Make sure you're checking those vehicles off East Almost Drive. It is shaping up to be a busy morning, Mike. And a beautiful morning. We do so have a few clouds hanging around here. Uh, temperatures are not bad. 70 in town, 63 Bernie stage, mid 60s parts of the hill country. Still got some humidity out there, but these numbers are definitely going to be dropping down these dew point temperatures. And so that's going to make for some beautiful uh, weather this afternoon. 88 degrees at uh, 83 at noon, 88 for a high temperature with mostly sunny skies. And then the rest of the week looks very nice. Cool mornings, warm afternoons. All right, Sarah, thanks for filling in on Friday and again today. Yeah. And I'll be here again at 9 a.m. Fantastic. All right, we'll see you then. Thanks for watching, everybody. Have a good Monday.